Well, are you ready to move? Are you ready to make some movement in your life? How about a little physical movement? Let's see some hands waving, okay? Let's get some physical movement going on here. All right, that's great. Now, how about some spiritual movement? Are you ready to move? Are you ready to move spiritually? And when we're moving spiritually, what we're doing is we are living forward. We're moving forward in all ways, in all shapes, and in all forms. And in every time we are growing and evolving the soul, what's happening is there's a forward movement. Today's text comes to us from the Palm Sunday themes of Luke chapter 19, verse 28. And when Jesus said these things, he went forward to Jerusalem. He went forward, and I love this because what a powerful teaching it is as we move in towards the Easter season when so many people are focusing on the death and sadness of Good Friday, possibly, and even the death and sadness of an Easter morn waiting for a resurrection. And we go through this journey of life not realizing that so much of our spiritual evolution requires us to be as Jesus, and that is to move forward, to move forward in all things, to make sure that our life is advancing in a forward movement at all times, that no matter what we're going through, no matter what challenges we may be facing, that there is a forward direction within us. If we could grasp anything from the passages of Palm Sunday throughout the Gospels, the passages that are inviting us to begin to celebrate a triumphal entrance into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, it is that he went forward, forward through all things. Now, moving forward sometimes can be scary because sometimes that requires some changes. It may require us to uh, make, take some chances in life or some risks to push through and to make it through to the forward movement, but it will take us to some of our greatest moments in life. And we will fulfill our destiny if we're only moving in a forward direction. Going backwards, retreating, pulling away, is not helping us move in that direction of fulfilling our life's destiny or the direction that we're called to live within the journey of our life. Now, Jesus came to teach that powerful message of eternal life, wanting to teach the power of the divine at work in us and through us. And through all adver adversity, the divine power is still there. So yet to do this, it really required that he had to move forward. Yes, that meant change moving through all of the aspects that we celebrate in traditional Easter week. In a metaphysical tradition, we're looking at all the powerful symbolisms of the story of Easter and how we find ourselves there. Where we find that Jesus moved through the praises of the wonderful triumphal entries in Jerusalem, where people are waving the palm branches and yelling Hosanna and everything being a celebration, shall we say, of the seemingly positive. Yet Jesus did not stay there, he moved through it. And at the same time, we find that he moved through all of the challenges that we may find unfolding through the cross and through the tomb and coming to the resurrection. For in the end, what we call is really not an end, but a new beginning. We find that he fulfilled his destiny. And in that, we find the truth of the living uh, teaching of abundant life and eternal life being exemplified in everything he said and did. He moved through, he moved forward. Key word is through, that's right. 12 days ago, my beloved partner passed away on March the 16th. You know, it, that was a moment of great challenge for my life and still uh, people ask me, how are you dealing with it? How are you going? on how are you making it? And I said, I'm pushing through. Because the this will always be with us, the this of his passing, the this, this of the loss of my beloved, the this, but this will always be here. But we move through this, we move through it to find that there is even greater things and yet more yet to come and unfold within our lives. And the key word is, are we moving forward? Are we moving through? what we're going through in the journey of our life. There's stuff of life is always going to be there, but we're not called to dwell in it. Challenges, loss, all kinds of things may come to our life that may ups be upsetting us or we may find as a, a difficult moment in the journey, but 
It's stuff that will always be there, but you move through the stuff. You move through to find that there's even more yet for you as you make that passage. So moving forward is truly allowing then for an evolution of the soul. Could you just stop and say, I allow evolution? Just say that and proclaim that every day. I allow my soul to evolve. I allow it to grow. I allow it to change. And that may mean that I'm going to go through some stuff. I may go through some challenges. I may go through, but the key thing is, have I gone through it or did I set up camp in the midst of it? Did I just dwell there? Did I just stay there? So many of us will find ourselves saying, I'm not allowing of any kind of evolution at all. I'm just setting up camp and res resigned to dwell in my sadness, dwell in my grieving, dwell in my loss. It doesn't discount the loss that you may have. That stuff is there, yes. But as you move through, you know that how it then unfolds for you a lesson or a reason why it was there for a season and why it's moved on in your journey of your life. And you begin to understand that there's some beauty and richness offered to you as you move through it rather than just staying in there. So our motto needs to be that we are ever evolving each and every day. We're moving through whatever experience we may face. We are, as Jesus exemplified, going to our Jerusalem, moving forward to our destiny, moving forward to what we're called to be and to do and to fulfill in this world, and not allowing the circumstances of life to be burdens that hold us back from the ever-evolving soul. So the day-to-day -day question we must ask ourselves is, am I pressing forward? In the midst of that challenge, am I pressing forward? It's the forward movement that gets you through it and it will get you to the other side because moving into the ever new is all about reshaping our lives. And we're called every day to be born again, to be born anew, to say whatever was yesterday, I, I appreciate, I value it, but that was the yesterday. What is available to me today? Let me be born again. Let me be renewed. Let me experience something fresh in the midst of this challenge. Let me push through to a wonderful state that is ever evolving. Do you ever notice that the caterpillar doesn't stay where he is, but he's moving forward to becoming that beautiful butterfly? And that forward movement may require some pressing against the sides of the cocoon to strengthen its wings. That, that forward movement may require facing some challenge or obstacle that the cocoon may afford it. But oh, once breaking through, there's a beautiful opportunity to soar and to fly in its beauty and fulfill its purpose as a butterfly. We'll never complete the job if we're not moving forward. And the job of the ever-evolving soul, the soul coming to its place of fulfillment, the soul coming to this place of greater understanding and enlightenment, the soul that has come to this earth, to this time, to this moment, for the purpose of unfolding, you'll never complete that job if we're not in a forward direction at all times. For our calling every day then is to move, not backwards, but to move forward in this wonderful way. We find in Philippians chapter three, verse 14, I press on toward or forward. I press on toward or forward. The goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. The passage before it sets the tone for this in saying in verse 13, I do not consider that I have reached the goal. None of us, because there's always something more out there. You know that the universe is ever expanding. The universe that we live in is ever growing and expanding outward. There's not a, a moment where the universe may say, I've achieved its goal. There's nothing more for me to do. I'm, I'm finished, I'm done. But no, we realize in the journey of our life, I'm not considered I've reached any kind of goal, yet there is more to come. There's more to do, there's more to be expressed, there's more to be lived. So I find personally for myself in dealing with the extreme loss of my beloved Robert, there's more and I'm pressing forward. There's more yet to come. Although I have celebrated his life and the richness, and the beauty of what he's brought to my life and the joy of sharing almost 21 years together, 
Yet there is something more. And I press forward and move on towards it into this wonderful place of a calling towards the, the greatest unfulfillment in my life. So we find then that uh, there is one thing that we, we must remember in the passage of Scripture. It says, but one thing I do know, forgetting those things that are behind. Now, sometimes we have to look at this word and say the context of what it means for us spiritually. Forgetting. Forgetting simply means I'm not placing in the forefront of my mind the stuff I'm going through, the challenges I'm going through, the problems, or whatever it may be. I'm actually setting it aside. So it's not the forefront of my thinking. And quite often, as we have a difficult time moving through something or moving in a forward direction, it's because we've allowed all the chaos, the fear, the loss, the stress, the worry, this, all this stuff to be in the forefront of our mind. So the writer of this passage is inviting us to make a mental change in the journey of our life. Not to forget is to obliterate from any kind of thought, but that means just setting it aside so it's not in the forefront of your thinking at all times. Because, you know, it's always going to be there with us, but it's not in the forefront of our consciousness. He writes on to say, I strive for those things which are before me. I strive, meaning I work towards I work, I make some, I put some energy. I in, make a heartfelt endeavor towards moving for what is before me. And let me tell you, the work of your soul is not intended to be difficult. A lot of people, oh, to work on the evolving of soul. It sounds like it's so hard, so much, so difficult. Let me tell you this, God's plan for you to prosper is simple and easy and laid out for you. Do you understand that? The prosperity, abundance, and blessing that God desires for you is so readily available, but it says that you strive for it. You make the effort in that. It is an unwavering faith that's so important. For God's plans for prosperity are filled with this wonderful ease. And there is a wonderful ease that comes when we make this commitment to trust. That's right, to trust. Let me tell you this, the trust is the thrust that will push you forward. You know, when you're stuck in something, in a place, I'm just going to trust. All things are working together for good. And it's that thrust that kind of pushes you forward to help you get through whatever you're going through in your life, whatever difficult thing you're facing in the journey of your life. When Robert passed away, certainly a, a cloud of sadness came with the sense of loss. But the power of trusting that God has something more and amazing yet for me to encounter. And the trust that whatever God, God called Robert to do has been fulfilled and he's in the loving arms of eternity and celebrating with great peace. I trust, I trust God has now welcomed Robert into full care and love in a new dynamic in this eternal essence. And I also trust for myself that there's something more for me that God is not saying, okay, Robert's gone, you're hang it up and just give up. But no, press forward, move on. There's even something more and greater that's for you. So I found that the trust is the thrust to kind of push you through whatever you're doing to help you move forward. So what we must do is hone the craft of trusting. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, all your thinking, all your consciousness. To hone the craft of trusting means that you trust every single day of your life. You do something that exercises this. What are you trusting for today? Have you really said today I trust for something I believe with such power, I believe with such faith and authority. Let me tell you this, I invite you to exercise your trusting muscles. Get out there and trust for something, believe for something, begin to claim for something, begin to claim it. If you say, well, I don't know what to claim for. Well, honey, then claim for some goodness for me or claim for some goodness for your others around you or claim for goodness for the world. But trust that it's unfolding, trust that it's happening. Because if you can't think of something you need to trust for yourself, start trusting for others. Trusting for the world around you. Let's start trusting that all things are working together for good. 
You see, we've got to hone the craft of trusting because that is the thrust that will push us through to make it through into the journey of our lives. We have a beautiful example in scripture, the children of Israel. They simply couldn't trust. They would come through a journey of traveling through a wilderness to the uh, edges of this promised land that was offered to them and they sent out spies to check it out and they came back and said whoa, whoa, whoa there's some really good things and whoa there's some really tough things that we would face going into the promised land and what happened is they hadn't honed the craft of trusting they had enabled this power of trusting for God to lead and direct their paths every step of the way Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. And unfortunately, the children of Israel began to look at everything from their own understanding and saying, well, there's giants in there and there's going to be challenges and things that we can't overcome. So we're not going in, even though it's already been promised. Promised. It was called not the maybe land. It wasn't called the, oh, let's just see if it works out kind of land. What was it called? The promised land. And for us, there's so much that the divine power and presence of God has already promised for you. Already promised for you. But you haven't been trusting. You haven't been trusting in a forward energy that says, I step out in faith. I step out believing. I step out trusting that God is directing my paths and I'm not leaning on my own understanding. I am now enabling that power and presence of God to show me the way. It's going to direct my paths because I trust. And though I may face obstacles and though I may face giants and though I may face things that the world may claim as being difficult or problems, I trust. Every step, every footstep is being ordained by God to take me through this. So don't give up on the journey of life. And when you come to an obstacle or a challenge, don't give up. Because if you do, you end up wandering in the wilderness. And that's the true metaphor of that story for us in our lives. Because we have so many children of God today who are wandering. They were on the cusp of what was promised and what is promised. But they're continually choosing to just wander. And so we have a world of wilderness wanders all around us. Now, what lies ahead may be unknown to us. But let me tell you this, it's known to God. It may be unknown to us and we don't know what the future holds and every step we may take. We don't always know what's ahead down the road. But we do know that it's known to God. The divine source of all good. Knows the desires of our heart before we even ask, Scripture says. It is known. God knows the infinite possibilities available to us. So let me tell you this. When you're learning to trust, I'm going to tell you, it begins with knowing that God has your back. That's right. God has your highest and best. God knows the best for your life. And it's already promised for you. So what hot lies ahead will be for your best if you simply trust and allow that thrust to push you through to make it. Because fears will follow you with a lying forecast that you can't make it. That's right, a forecast. You know, like a weather forecaster says, tomorrow there's gonna to be rain. Tomorrow there'll be sunshine. Tomorrow will be cloudy skies. Well, they're offering you a forecast of what will be. And quite often what happens is our fears will create a forecast lie or forecast a lie to our lives that you can't make it. It's not going to work. It's too great of a challenge. It's too difficult. Let me tell you this, losing a beloved of 21 years, there was something just grabbed me and said, how am I going to make it? Can I do this? Oh, let me tell you. It's just an overwhelming something that says, you know what? You can't. Oh, but wait a minute. What if I bring clarity to my thinking and saying, I know that God has my back, that God knows my highest and best, and what lies for me may be unknown, but God knows, and I trust. And I trust that the highest and best is already there, ready for me and unfolding for me. And I will give up the words, I can't, I can't. 
See, it's really important in, a, in our lives that we somehow get some clarity and we became, become very clear with our thoughts and our expressions. Because we can create some confusion in the relationship with this universe and the divine unfolding in our lives because we're sending out the wrong signal. There was a soldier who had recently found out that he had cancer and the diagnosis was making him feel miserable. He struggled to carry on his duties, but after polishing his boots properly, the drill sergeant called him forward and said, why haven't you polished your boots properly? What's wrong with you? Can you make your kit presentable or not? Cancer, the soldier replied. Well, good, the sergeant shouted. Much to the soldier's surprise, the captain marched off and took off and the next day, the soldier was called up again by the drill sergeant, and his trousers were covered with creases and said, why are you still a mess? The sergeant roared in his face, why can't you keep up with the others? If you can't sort yourself out, you'll be sent packing. The soldier, not understanding his sergeant's lack of compassion and feeling rather sorry for himself, he stammered, yes, I can, sir. Well, the following morning, the soldiers were lined up for a weapon inspection and the poor soldier was fumbling. And there were all kinds of commands being given. And once more, the sergeant pulled him out from the section and said, I've given you enough warnings, young man. Today's your last day. Pack up your belongings. Ooh, the fellow soldier said, well, well, wait a minute. Sarge, you can't send him home. He just found out he's got cancer. Well, the drill sergeant looked surprised and said, what, you've got cancer? He said, well, why haven't you told me? Instead of every day insisting you could do your duties with an I cancer. You see the confusion? And sometimes in life, we're not clear and we're sending mixed messages. What is it? Cancer or I cancer? You see, that can happen in the journey of our life in our spiritual journeys where we're sending out mixed messages i can't i can't it's possible i don't know the unwavering faith then takes us in all kinds of places where we're just so mixed and confused and let me tell you if you're mixed and confused god is mixed and confused about the desires of your heart because god said what does he want i want you to prosper but i am a Abiding by the free will and choice that you make. And I am waiting for you to be clear. Because if your choice is you can't, well then I cannot provide it for you. But if your choice is I can, well then the promised land is available for you. Everything is, available. let's move forward. Let's go and move towards our Jerusalems in life. Because fears are simply today's lies about tomorrow's promise. Fears are denials of hope rooted in doubts about God's power, presence, and promise and workings. God always offers us the guarantee of his presence, and that should be enough to cast aside all fears. If we really realize the promise that I'll never leave you nor forsake you, that no matter what challenge, no matter what loss, what experience you're going through, the power and presence of God will never ever leave us, but is always there with us. Let me tell you that nothing ever grows in your comfort zones. So just know that, that life is going to push you through those comfortable places. And the only way of moving forward in life is to get out of your head and start embracing those fears that you have. I can't, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know, it may be too difficult. I, I, I'm scared, I'm frightened, whatever it may be. And you push through those comfort zones, shall we say, because we often torture ourselves in these places where we have fears that overwhelm us and say, I don't know if I can move forward. In 1992, in the Olympic Games in Barcelona, there was one of the greatest candidates for the gold medal in the 400 meter run. His name was Derek Redman of Britain. And just out in the race, about 150 meters, his Achilles tendon snapped. Ow, ow. He started to grasp 
And just in great pain, the crowd looked as he stumbled to catch himself and trying to continue. And he started limping along through the race, trying to continue with an intention to say, I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish. Even if I just limp along, I'm going to make it. Now, while the other runners sped by and passed him up, there was a figure that came out of the stands and put his arm around him. He was Redmond's father. He came out of the stands and simply wrapped his arms around him. He said, come on, we're going to make it together. We can do this. He helped him finish the race. And it's a marvelous illustration of God's enormous mercy and grace. When you're going through some sort of failure or brokenness or challenge or great loss in your life, the divine presence of God is there. Stepping out of the stands, shall we say, to put an arm around us in a beautiful metaphor of saying, I'm there to help you through it. Key word is we're going through it. Key word is we're moving forward to our Jerusalem. That's what it's all about. Because moving forward is a choice. And so we keep moving forward in this wonderful understanding that we made this decision that may require us to start shifting some behaviors or adopting some new habits and having some new outlooks. And we allow this evolution to transform our lives and bring about some change because we're ever evolving and moving to our highest and best in the power of God. So today, I want to tell you that Palm Sunday is just this gorgeous moment of asking a question. Are you living forward? Are you ready to move through? Because what you may face is some stuff, and stuff will be there. Are you ready to move through it? To move through to unfold your destiny, to unfold your highest and best, and to receive your glorious moments in life that you're called to live. Let's do it together. Are you ready to move? Let's move forward. Amen.